Let us continue our discussion on significant figures in this second part of the video. In the previous video, in part 1, we discussed how propagation of error happens when we have two physical quantities, quantities being um, added or subtracted. Right? In this video, I am again going to look at propagation of errors and we are going to see what happens when we have two physical quantities and we are multiplying them or dividing them. So, uh, we will start with multiplication. Let us say we have a physical quantity Z and we are, which comes out of multiplication of two physical quantities X and Y. Now, we will follow the same method as we did uh, when we did uh, uh, addition or subtraction. So, Z is equal to X plus Y. That will give me Z plus minus delta Z is equal to X plus minus delta X and Y plus minus delta Y. Right. If you are watching this video before you watch the part one, then uh, just for your information, uh, Z is a physical quantity which comes out of uh, product of two physical quantities X and Y and delta Z, delta X and delta Y, they are the errors in the measurement of these three physical quantities. Uh, so if, I op if I open the bracket, I will get X, Y plus minus X delta Y plus minus delta X into y plus minus delta x delta y right? and this will be z plus minus delta z. Now uh, we will make an assumption that since delta x and delta y these uh, this number will be extremely small because delta x is error and it will be a number less than 1. Similarly delta y also will be less than 1 and we know we have learnt in math that when you multiply two numbers uh, which are less than 1 the further decrease for example if I have 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.2 both these numbers are less than 1. The product would be lesser than either of them. 0 0.1 by 0 0.2 will give me 0 0.02, right, which is smaller than 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. And if I multiply another number to this, uh, which is less than 1, for example, if I multiply this by 0 0.1, right, all three are lesser than 1, and the, the answer to this I'll get as 0 0.002, which is still smaller than that. Similar, same way over here, delta x and delta y are less than 1. So, the product will be very, very small and therefore, I will ignore this part. And therefore, the equation will become delta is equal to x y plus minus x delta y plus minus y delta x. Right? And z is equal to x y as we see over here. So, z and x y, these two terms will get cancelled out and therefore, I will get plus minus delta z is equal to plus minus x delta y plus minus y delta x. Okay. Uh, what I will do is I will divide by z throughout. So, I will get uh, plus minus delta z by z is equal to plus minus x delta y dividing by z. Now, in z is x y. So, I can write here x y that is I divided by x y plus minus y delta x divided by x y. Right. So, I have divided by z throughout. So, I get plus minus delta z upon z is equal to x x gets cancelled, so I will get delta y upon y plus minus delta x upon x. And as we discussed in an earlier video, delta z upon z is the relative error in z. Delta y upon y is the relative error in y and delta x upon x is the relative error in x. So, this is how the relationship, relationship comes in that when we multiply, when we have a physical quantity coming out of multiplication, the relative error of the two physical quantities, if you add them up, you will get the relative error of in the physical quantity in the third, in the final physical quantity. Uh, if I multiply this by 100 throughout, I will get uh, the percentage error in uh, Z. Uh, if I write it over here, plus minus delta Z or delta Z upon Z into 100 is equal to plus minus delta Y upon Y into 100 plus minus delta X upon X into 100. Right. These are the percentage errors in X and Y. And as we discussed earlier, the maximum value of this error, the maximum will be when we have got plus sign for all this. So, I will get the maximum value of the relative error delta z upon z is equal to delta x upon x plus delta y upon y and this is what I finally get. So, from this I conclude that when two physical quantities are multiplied, right, the relative error, the summation of the relative error of these two quantities is equal to the relative error in the final quantity. Delta z upon z is equal to delta x upon x plus delta y upon y. And this is the maximum error in the physical quantity z. Uh, let us quickly do something uh, related to division, right? So, in, in that case, we will have z is equal to 
x upon y right and therefore z plus minus delta z is equal to x plus minus delta x upon y plus minus delta y now this can be written as uh, x plus minus delta x right multiplied by y plus minus delta y power 1 z plus minus delta z i didn't i did not need this actually so this particular denominator i have brought into the numerator by saying pi and put the power as minus 1 right now what i'll do is i'll take in this bracket x common so i'll get x into 1 plus minus delta x by x Similarly, over here, I'll take y common, so I'll get y into 1 plus minus delta y by y, right, all this to the power 1, right, therefore, z plus minus delta z is equal to x, 1 plus minus delta x by x. Now, I take this power to y, so I'll get minus, y raised to the power minus 1. 1 minus delta y upon y raised to the power minus 1. y raised to the power minus 1 can be written as 1 upon y. So, I'll get x upon y into 1 plus minus delta x upon x to 1 plus delta y upon y raised to the power minus 1. Now, over here we have power as minus 1, right? And we have a quantity 1 plus delta y by y. This can be solved by using the binomial theorem. Binomial theorem says that uh, 1 plus p whole raised to the power n. Uh, generally, in the binomial theorem expression, instead of p, we use x. But here, to avoid confusion between this x and the x over here, I am taking here p. 1 plus p raised to the power n is equal to 1 plus 1 plus n p right, plus n into n minus 1 upon 2 factorial p square plus n into n minus 1, n minus 2, 3 factorial p cube and so on and so forth. Right? Now, if this p is smaller than 1, then this particular quantity will become very small because you got p square. Similarly, this quantity will still be smaller, p cube. This is p raised to the power 3. And the, all the terms that follow, they will have p raised to the power 4 and p raised to the power 5 and so on and so forth. So those terms will be very, very small. So we will ignore all the terms from here onwards, right? Because these terms will be very, very small. And therefore, we'll get 1 plus p whole raised to the power n is equal to 1 plus np. And I'll use this over here to solve this. So I'll get z plus minus delta z is equal to x upon y, 1 plus minus delta x by x into, this is 1 plus p whole raised to the power n is equal to 1 plus np. So I'll get 1, of course I have over here 1 plus minus 1, 1 plus minus y delta y upon y. And <clears throat> if I use this space. Now, in this part, I'll take out z common. So I'll get z into 1 plus minus delta z upon z is equal to x, y into 1 plus minus delta x by x into 1 plus minus delta y by y. Okay. Z and x upon y will get cancelled out because z is equal to x and y. So I'll get 1 plus minus delta z upon z is equal to 1 plus minus delta x by x into 1 plus minus delta y by y. Right? Hmm. If I'll rewrite the last equation, so I'll get 1 plus minus delta z upon z is equal to 1 plus minus delta x by x into 1 plus minus delta y by y. I open this bracket, so I'll get 1 plus minus delta x upon x plus minus delta y by y plus minus delta x x delta y by y. As always, we will <coughs> ignore this part because um, it will be a very, very small quantity and 1 and 1 will get cancelled. So, I will get delta z upon z plus minus is equal to plus minus 
delta x by x plus minus delta y by y. The maximum value of delta z by z will be when I take the positive values, so delta x upon x plus delta y upon y. Okay. So you can see that I come back to the same equation which I had when we did multiplication, right? So if I again one look look at this. This is what I had got when we did multiplication. I get the same term when I do multi division also. And therefore, I conclude that whenever two physical quantities are multiplied or divided, the relative error in those two physical quantities get added up to get the final error in the final quantity Z. Right? So, uh, what we can say is uh, when we have addition or subtraction, errors get added but when we have multiplication or division then relative errors get added, get added. if you remember when we, uh, we have addition and subtraction we get delta z is equal to delta x plus delta plus delta y right so the errors in the terms are getting added this is what we had when we had addition or subtraction but when we have multiplication or division we have we get this equation that means the relative errors get added up right uh, with this uh, i have completed this video on uh, propagation of errors uh, i would recommend that uh, you look at a few numericals few questions on uh, errors and practice how errors get propagated when we have any of these operations and then you'll get a good idea about how to handle errors and how to interpret errors whenever they are given to you. Thank you.